what makes God angry or what disturbs God, what troubles God. The answers to the questions are important because we don't like to be the troublemaker of God. And we don't like to be the reason for God to get angry. In the first reading, God is angry at the elders, at the shepherds. In the gospel, God is troubled by the people so that even if he needed to rest, he started talking to them. So back to the question, what disturbs God? What troubles God? And what makes God angry? Three, question, three answers to the single question. The first is, if you don't like God to get angry, and if you don't like to be called a troublemaker of God, the first thing that you must remember is, remember the poor. Remember the poor. Because in the kingdom of God, the poor are our masters. The poor are our bosses. Boss natin ang dukha. At sa katapusan ng ating buhay, ang huhukom sa atin kung papasok tayo sa langit o hindi ay ang mga dukha na pinansin o hindi pinansin. Remember the poor. The opposite is, if you want to make God angry, if you want to trouble God, then trample the rights of the poor. Ignore the poor or make the poor suffer because of you. That is going to make God really angry. The second is remember the children. Because the Lord told us in another part of the gospel, unless you allow the children to teach you, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Unless you become like little children, you will not be called members of this kingdom. So in the kingdom of God, the poor are our lords. And in the kingdom of God, the children are our teachers. In our classrooms, the let passers are teachers. In our classrooms, those who have master's and doctoral degrees are our superintendents and principals and supervisors. But in the kingdom of heaven, the children are our teachers in their innocence, in their total dependence on God. Pasado ba tayo? Siguro. Kasi pinapahalaga natin ang mga bata. At sira ang ulo talaga kapag tinignan mo ang bata at sinabi mong problema na naman. That is a sick mind. And it is even a sicker mind to allow babies to be killed in the wombs of their mothers. Take care of the children. Remember the poor. Pasado ba? Pangatlo. Tinan natin kung pasado. Love those who hate you. Pasado pa rin? What angers God is a mode of revenge. What angers God is the desire to get even. Kapag tinanong tayo, what is the soul mark of being a Christian disciple? Are you going to say, I pray the rosary? Are you going to say, I go to Mass? Are you going to say, I donate to the poor? Are you going to say, I teach catechism? But those are many different signs of being a good Catholic in many different ways. But if there is only one sign that is to be asked of us to prove that we are Catholics, that one sign 
to prove that you are really a Christian is you love those who hate you. To love those who hate you is a sign that the grace of God has borne fruit in you. Balik tayo sa unang tanong. Paano nagagalit ang Diyos? Paano nadidisturb ang Diyos? And how can you avoid being the troublemaker of God? If you don't like to anger God, remember the poor, remember the children, and remember and love those who hate you. This is what pleases God. And the opposite of that is what angers God. The abuse of the poor, the killing and abuse of children, and the revenge and violence against those who hate us. These are the things that trouble God. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us look into our heart of hearts and ask ourselves, where are the poor? Where are the children? Where are those who hate me? Have they become invisible? And have I canceled them in my life? 